Mortal Kombat is back. If you're like me, you've been playing the game since, I think, what, Mortal Kombat 2? Like, early 90s, late 90s, that kind of thing. But I was looking at the box art, or the poster, if it's still called that anymore, and it just doesn't look great. So, I decided to do my own. Here, I'm starting with the thumbnail. The goal of a thumbnail is to get your ideas down pretty, pretty basic with it. You're not really trying to, you're not really focusing on details or anything like that. You just want to look, how does these elements look put together? And normally I would do a lot of thumbnails, but with this one, I was pretty... Yeah, I was pretty direct. I, I knew exactly what I wanted for the most part. I was like, all right, Liu Kang definitely has to be on the box. Uh, Sub-Zero, absolutely. And if you have Sub-Zero, you got to have Scorpion. In. And then after that, I was kind of looking at it. I was like, okay, Sub-Zero, Scorpion. And I was like, okay, you have the two dragons. You know, Liu Kang has the red dragon and the blue dragon right so scorpion is kind of well if red and yellow it's yellow and blue but it's close enough in my opinion to the red dragon and blue dragon the yin and yang for it so i went with that and then right around here i'm i'm thinking uh, it looks empty so i start putting in uh shao in this game he's not shao khan he's general shao um because like if you're used to the original one he's the ultimate big baddie for the most part in mortal kombat games but you know i made a mistake and uh the in the game it's actually shang song who's the bad guy spoiler alert but it works i think it works anyway so here i'm going into like the color stages so just put down a flat background color i use orange in this case because i think and it would go good with like Scorpion's fire, Scorpion and Liu Kang's fire, as well as Sub-Zero's blue, as well as pushing, you know, Shao Kahn in the background, pushing it back a little bit more. So you kind of have the, the three char main characters up front and then Shao Kahn or General Shao um, just luring in the background, right? And then... From there, I just put in the color, basics color. See, again, this is also a sketch, but it's just a color sketch to see, okay, does these work? And again, with this one, um, I know exactly what I'm doing. I kind of did a little, I worked it out a little bit. So I didn't have to do a lot of planning in the pencil and color stages. Um, took a, a shit ton of reference. Again, knew exactly what I was doing. Uh, I know exactly what I wanted for this one. Huge fan of uh, Mortal Kombat. So here, I'm finishing up the color sketch, right? So uh, everything seems to be working pretty good. So I put in like the, the final colors that I'm gonna uh, color pick from. So what I do is once I got the color and a line and everything down and I have a good composition, from there, I just go, I uh, make a layer and I paint on top of that layer. All right, so I go straight into painting. So I have my final layer. So from, from here on, I won't be picking any new colors for the most part. From here is just, I'll just be color picking from what's already on there, right? So it's like the, everything is done. So you just need to put in the colors that, you just need to refine the colors that I've already put in. And here with the dragons, I was kind of like uh, doing a late editing of this because like the dragons looked a little incomplete. So I was like, all right, let's continue with that uh, yin and yang flow where they're like, all right, they're, they're kind of um, twisting around the characters and you know, they're coming from that central point because in this game, you know, um, and the entire history of Mortal Kombat, uh, Sub-Zero and, um, and Scorpion, they've had history this one they're even more close than uh they were previously here the i got the composition everything i need pretty correctly or as cor correctly as i need to do to move on to the next step and this step i have i'm just 
painting straight on top of the line layer. So everything that's there, that whatever marks I made before, just put paint right on top of it. So in this stage, what I'm thinking about is just using the colors that I already have, that I've already put on, and then it's form, right? In this time, I was like, okay, how do I make them look 3D? I'm not focusing on too much on detail just yet. Although sometimes that um, I do put in some details. So I'm jumping around, jumping around, jumping around. Um, that helps me to not hyper-focus on one area of the drawing too much. So sometimes <clears throat> what happen is we get focused on one area, most likely the face or some kind of detail in the clothes and you'll focus on that area way too much. And then you look up and then that area is super detailed and everything else isn't the same level of detail. So it looks out of place. And then you either have to take out some of that detail or you have to then try to make everything as detailed as that area. And then what usually happens is you'll overwork your piece. Trying to get it the, the first steps down um, and then I move on because the first step is like after the sketch layer is just okay getting the basic proportions the form and the light right all right once I have those down then I'll go in and I'll add in like the little details folds in the uh, I'll go in and refine the folds in the clothes um, you know the hair uh, I'll fix any kind of um, anatomy issues and then the third step would be me just um just pulling everything together just once you once everything looks mostly correct it's just about refining that and getting it down to a polished stage so here i'm working on uh the best mortal Kombat character scorpion of course <clears throat> so with scorpion and sub-zero it was pretty fun to, to to paint my favorite was scorpion because like the the gold, the kind of off, off color gold of his mask was really cool. And then just the pose that I chose for this one was just really fun to draw. It was just really fun to paint over. And then the flames as well. Um, yeah, I'm moving around, um, trying not to stay in one place for too long. Getting rid of this stage, I'm really getting rid of most of the lines. And just building up the forms little by little base layer um i also try to let a little bit of that orange that i put down show through not too much um because it helps give a little bit of texture and uh, a little bit of interesting interest in areas that may just look flat i'm also redrawing a lot of what uh, i already drew because no matter how detailed you get when you're painting, some things just won't, won't translate or you'll see something that just doesn't work right. So it's always a good idea that you just, you know, correct what needs to be corrected, no matter how much you like it or not. Then we come to Sub-Zero, which this one gave me, I think this one was the most challenging of it. Um, just the angle that I chose, it, it wasn't working at first. Um, so I kind of, so here I'm trying to just get the, the, the colors right, the, the shine of the mask and the detail of it. And then Although I'm not happy with it, I move on. Cause sometimes it's like, it. sometimes it's best to just, all right, move on to a different part of the painting, get that right. And then um, once you spend some time away from that and you worked on something else, then you come back to what you were, you know, what was giving you 
some issues. So, so like Scorpion, the main part of Sub Zero here is getting the the ice hand correct, right? So you should be able to right away from the color and from the ice, you know this is Sub Zero. And this came out a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Actually, I thought it was gonna be way more challenging to draw his ice hand. I don't know how well it comes out, how well it reads, but ice isn't really something that I draw a lot. So I was a little surprised that it it, it just went by so easily. By the way, this whole piece took me like 20 hours to do. So here I'm going in and um, in this section, I'm doing the details in his costume. So one of the things with um, doing folds, I like to focus on like the folds first, like just the, the basic uh, shapes of the fold. And then I will go in and add the details on top of it. So the basic shape of the fold. So and then I add in the light and then whatever detail because he has on kind of like a pleated flab, uh, fabric like so. It, it, it helps to draw the, you know, plan out basically where the folds are and then add in the light on top of it. And then on top of that, then you do like whatever details, whatever pleats, whatever uh, grooves um, that needs to be put in. Originally, I had planned to have him do like holding up both hands, but then I was like, all right, that's not going to work. He's either going to block Liu Kang or is just not going to read from behind Liu Kang's head. So I just decided to just hide that hand. There's like one less hand for me to draw. Then I come back to the head that was giving me some problems. So uh, the first thing you see me here is fixing the proportions because I think it was a little bit off. I flipped the canvas to, to just get a, a, a better look and then readjust the mask. Then I realized it was still kind of uh skewed it was at an angle it was at an, a weird angle so at this at this stage it's like i mean it's easier because it's digital but like at this stage i'm constantly just fixing and going back over as as many times as i need to until i get something that's right obviously you want to get it um as best as you can on the first try but that rarely ever happens so uh, I like to tackle something. If it's giving me a little problem, move away, come back, tackle a little bit of it. And if, if it's still giving me a little problem, then I move away, work on a different piece and, and, and then come back again. It gives your brain kind of a little uh, reset, right? So like the folds here I'm working on and then the uh, shoulder pads or the, I guess, pleats in the, in the neck area whatever that's called put in the buttons um right here everything's really i zoom out kind of look at it and go okay things it's reading right it's a poster you should be able to look at it and it works up close or uh further away either way it should work and then i go back in and i was like all right i fixed that i uh, brought the eyes um a little bit further apart because the thing about this is no matter how many how much reference you have no matter how much you measure no matter um how accurate you are sometimes you just have to go by feel and it's like it, it it might be right it might be exactly what you're going for but you just look at it and it just doesn't feel right so you kind of have to just push and pull and and change things around until it works out to what you are right you do you hopefully you do most of that in the uh sketch you know thumbnail phrase uh, thumbnail phase but that doesn't always happen and here i'm kind of uh turning on and off the layer because what um what i do is i don't usually i, I merge everything down but uh sometimes i'll just paint on top of that layer and leave the the lower layer um you know, it just depends on whatever I'm feeling at that point. And then it's, here's the dragons. The dragons were fun to do. Um, the point of the dragons here were not to be like super, um, not to be like super realistic, 
because like scorpion sub zero is kind of for something realistic they they're people and should look like real people i guess i'm putting up quotes um but with the dragons i wanted them to be a little bit more cartoony a little bit more flowy kind of like um uh old school japanese ink dragon illustrations right so it was like it, it's kind of like a juxtaposition to here you have like realistic ish looking characters versus um you know like this kind of like uh illustrative more cartoony dragon i kind of like that stuff you know it, not everything needs to be super polished and super uh realistic and all of that sometimes it's good to just have like a little um something in your drawings or painting that just is a little bit more lighthearted, right? Like when you're watching, um, you know, a very intense movie and you have like a, a break where like the cast can just relax and tell little jokes and lighten up a little bit, a little bit of brevity, I guess. All right. So here I'm coming to the point where things are coming together. I'm getting a little bit smaller at first i was i was focusing on big details now i'm kind of focusing on smaller details getting into the grooves the fixing some of the uh folds in Liu Kang's shirt going in um making sure the features are correct or at least the way i want them to um jumping back and jumping around as you know as usual to well I'm, I'm jumping around so you know it's kind of so you don't get bored doing one thing but also again not to overwork anything um yeah and then again shao uh, shao was a kind of a more of a last minute addition um so here i'm just going in with the the facial features Normally I would do this in like the final or the finished um, thumbnail layer, or at least I would do that before I started putting in colors. But again, it was last minute I was looking at it and I was like, okay, we need, we have this big empty space up top and um, we need to put something in. So, you know, sometimes you got to pull out the old pencil and just make some corrections as well as add in some stuff or you know just redraw some details but yeah he also came pretty quickly although i'm kind of looking at it and i was like maybe i should have put like uh put his helmet on because his helmet is pretty cool but it was like you know it is what it is it's blue and i don't know how menacing he looks he kind of looks kind of looks a little confused but hey I think it works. Um, although, speaking of like Shao, they kind of did him a little dirty in the in the games. You know, if it's like I was expecting him to be way more of a big bad, and he was kind of like he was kind of like a, a medium level boss, if you will. Like not the final boss, or not even like the kind of like the third to last boss of like a video game, which was, you know. If you if you remember the, like the original where he was just like he, he was just like the final boss and you had to pull out all the stop you either had to be really good at the game or you would have to like cheese to beat this guy you know and it was like in the in the game it's not quite that anymore which you know, I understand they want to focus on it's a it's the new era but yeah, they should have they should have made him way more more of a menace. Yeah, and then here I go into the the horns. Like one of the reasons why, like even though he is not the big 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 bad, one of the reasons why I definitely wanted to paint him was just those horns. Those horns are cool. I'm not digging the, you know, the middle aged dad hairline that they gave him, but those horns are sweet those are some really cool horns and as cool as they look they were even more fun to to just paint again i i, I said sub-zero uh i said uh scorpion was my favorite part of 
um, the drawing, but apart from that, just doing Shao's horns were, I think, second favorite. So here, um, again, I'm getting rid of the, I got rid of the white, um, just wasn't working. Like, again, I was thinking about the yin and yang uh, aspect of things. And I was like, all right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely need to put some something in the background. Again, normally I would do this in um, in the thumbnail layer or at least very, very early. But, you know, it is it, it didn't work out that way. And Here, I'm just making a pattern. These are like tiny, the tiny Mortal Kombat symbols, and then just, you know, use it as a background. That's my Mortal Kombat uh, poster redesign. Hope you like it, and uh, thank you for watching.